Hello everyone. I'm going to start today with an apology. Um, I didn't post anything for at least a month and the reason for that is I've been working on this which is my latest book, Understanding Nick HDR Effects Pro. So if you're interested in HDR, then take a look at this. It's available on Amazon as a Kindle download. Very, very reasonably priced. Sorry for the unashamed um, promotion of the book, but it's how I make my money. So if you would like a copy of this, it's only $3.99 in the UK Amazon store and $4.99 in the US. Just take yourself over to Amazon and do a search on Nick HDR effects in the Kindle books bookstore and you should find this. Anyway, let's get back to the session today and I'm going to do a short tutorial also on HDR uh, but this time I'm going to be using actually the HDR software in Lightroom. So here we are in Lightroom. I've got a series of HDR um, images or images that were shot to turn into HDR. There's actually four of them here which are grouped together and these four as I've selected there are the ones that we're going to now merge into an HDR image. This is new functionality that was brought out in Lightroom version 6 so all I need to do is right click click the photo merge option and then pick HDR. Now when I do that the HDR preview screen uh, displays and we can see that now loading in. Okay that's now loaded so you can see immediately we get a preview of the HDR image you can zoom into a little bit uh, but you can see that the uh, quality of what's there is huge improvement on what we had before. A couple of options that you can uh, pick we've got the auto align function so this is where you're shooting with handheld typically rather than on a tripod you'd use the auto align uh, I still prefer to use the auto align even though these images were shot on the tripod I also can pick the auto tone and what it what uh, Lightroom does here is it tries to automatically tone the image after the HDR image has been merged um, it's fine you can pick that we can adjust the, the uh, settings afterwards now the other option we've got here is deghost amount so if there's anything moving in the scene deghosting will try to remove the effect because what typically happens when something's moving is the image becomes blurred in that area or you may find that you get two or three objects that have moved all appearing in the finished image so I tend to leave that on the high setting once you've made your settings just click merge and a new HDR image will be created okay here we are again then um, now you can see the original four images that I had and the new HDR image that's been created here I'm actually going to select that one as well and now click to add that to the stack so I'm going to click the group into stack option here and what that does now is it adds that image to this group of images so that they're all held together in Lightroom. It's a great way to organize things and I'm also going to drag that and drop it, uh, sorry just pick that one on its own. So I'm now going to drag that and actually drop it at the front of the stack. So now I can collapse, collapse the stack and we've got the um, HDR image on top. So now you can see the HDR image. If we zoom in you can see we've got some great detail here right into the shadow areas very little noise is evident and uh, the scene is well balanced if we go into the develop module here we can see the toning options that have automatically been chosen by the uh, by the uh, Lightroom and you can see that in the highlights have been pulled right over to the left shadows right over to the right now this is Lightroom trying to reveal as much detail as possible in the image now this is a sunrise scene 
it was shot with the sun just out of uh, the frame here to the right it's very low in the sky and at the moment it doesn't look much like a sunrise so we really need to adjust some of these options so the first thing I want to do is pull the shadows down and also push the highlights back a little bit and I'm going to move the blacks out as well the next thing I'll do is I'm going to add a little bit more warmth into the light as it was and I'm also going to use a adjustment on the sky to close down the exposure a little bit we'll increase the contrast there and I'm also going to open up the shadows because the area here was getting caught by the graduated graduation adjustment now another neat trick you can use as well to really make these clouds pop if you've got it is use the dehaze filter so as I do that you can see those are actually brought out very well indeed now I'm going to add a second adjustment this time to the foreground scene I'm going to use it to open up the shadows just a little bit I'll add a little bit more contrast into the scene and I'll also increase the saturation and a little bit of clarity as well so that's done and if we now go back into the exposure um, we can adjust that a little bit further there and we can also add in a little bit of clarity if we want to and a little bit more vibrance um, maybe that scene is a little bit too warm so we'll just cool it down a little bit and um, probably needs just a little bit more exposure into it there we go so that gives us a much better uh, scene overall now I'm going to show you something here if we go to camera calibration because this was merged as a DNG file you can also use the original um, settings for the camera calibration here and the natural setting is one that I much prefer with the Olympus cameras it does mean that I have to go back and adjust just that little bit more the the scene whoops there we go and possibly drag that back down but overall that's looking now to be a much better um, scene and it's much better than the original um, image that we we started with now at this point if I wanted to do more I could take that into something like Nick Viveza and I could really go to tone on it and produce something that looks a little bit um, more natural maybe or more of a an impact such as this one that I did earlier so there you go and um, that's how you can create HDR in Lightroom